In today's video, I'm going to be building this simple table saw jig that's going to be able to cut perfect miters no matter the angle, no matter how steep. Now, you can do that on a miter saw, but you also need to make a quick jig for that. I have some footage and I'll show you how to do it. Let's get started on this and I'll show you how it works. All right, guys, so it can't get more simple than this. If you have a table saw and you want to cut miters, perfect miters, and you don't feel like messing with your miter saw or you don't have a miter saw, then you can make this jig sliding table saw, regular table saw, it doesn't matter. You can um, just Grab a couple of pieces of scrap, three quarter inch plywood, make yourself a nice wedge to give yourself a little support. It's gonna have a backer block here. You can use plywood. I had a piece of poplar as a scrap laying around. I have an adjustable auto toggle clamp right here to hold the piece in place. This is your backer that's gonna stop the wood from moving as you pass it through the blade when it's on an angle. This jig can serve two purposes. Uh, you can cut miters with it. You can also use it as a tenon jig. You can make tenons for your mortises on this jig as well. Now, I didn't demonstrate that in this video, but I'm saving that for a future video when I have to actually make some mortise and tenon doors or something like that, show you guys how to use it. So um, let's get over to the table saw. Let's put it on there. I'll show you guys how it works. I'll show you how I made it real quick, and then we'll make some cuts. Well, I have to cut these really steep angles. I don't know if the camera can pick that up but that is a 67 and a half degree angle that I'm going to show you how to cut this on the miter saw using a quick, easy jig, but I'm also gonna make one for my table saw really quick because it's much easier to take a wide board and cut it on the table saw and get um, a more accurate cut on the angle. Now, um, when you lay this down on a miter saw with the jig the way I'm gonna show you how to do it, and you're cutting that steep angle this way, it's much safer, but when you stand it up like this, it gets a little sketchy, and the angles don't come out as good. I'm making a wider board than this, and it's not gonna be able to be cut on the miter saw like that, so I'm gonna have to do it on the table saw. So what I'm doing first is I clamped a nice square piece of three quarter inch plywood to my miter fence and I lock it in place with the clamp. Now I'm going to take another straight piece of three quarter plywood and I'm going to butt that right up against it just like that. And that's gonna form a perfect right angle. Pre-drill some holes and I'm gonna screw it together and then I'm gonna put a support piece back here. Then I'm gonna add a clamp to it to hold the piece in place as I run it through the saw with the blade on an angle to get the steep angle that I need. Now I'm just gonna take a wedge that I had cut. Just mount that somewhere right over there. That's perfect. And now I can loosen this. And I'll just drive a screw in through the bottom, give it a little more support. Okay, just gonna put a backer piece here and a clamp and we're ready to go. Okay, so now you can see it is 90 degrees. And what I'm gonna do is put a, a backer block right here, right? A backer board. And the reason I want to put the backer board there is so when I'm ready to cut the angle, I can put the piece of wood up here against it and I have a stop. And then as I push through past the blade, this will give me a lot more grip and make it safer and give me a place to mount a clamp that I can clamp the board to, to hold it in place as I run that steep angle. So I'm just gonna put that right there like that. And then we're just gonna run some screws in here. Just running the screws partially through. I'm gonna take my square and bring it inside there and make sure I'm at 90, which I am. Now I can tighten it up. So 
So now that I have my backer block, I'm going to mount this clamp here. I've had this, um, this kind of like a cam action clamp. Um, you can adjust the tension on it by using this. I'll put a link to all this in the description uh, so that if you need to purchase it, if you're making something like this, you can. You can make this jig on for a regular table saw. It will just slide um, against the fence. You, you just set your rip fence and you run it along your rip fence or you can make a runner and make it just like this and put it in the miter slot. That works too. For this, what I'm going to use is a Craig pocket screw because it has a washer head on it and that'll sit in there and it will hold this clamp in place. So I've just pre-drilled a couple of holes. So I'm just gonna get uh, that started. I'm using inch and a quarter, by the way. These are the um, coarse thread because I'm using softwood here, pine, um, poplar and plywood. Okay, get that one started. Once I get the third one in, then I'll pre-drill last hole. Just get these going. That's all tight. And so the theory here is I get a board and let's just obviously pretend that this doesn't have, and I'm going to demonstrate this on the regular board also, but um, you'll see how it works here. So now these, the whole jig will be moved forward so that I can line this up with the blade, then I would clamp it down in place. I'll put the board in, I'll tilt the blade to the angle I want, and then I would clamp it in place. That's not going anywhere. And then I have the blade all the way down so that I can run this through and you can see how it's gonna work. You run it straight through, you make the cut. I think I'm going to remove this bottom screw here. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I, having the blade at the right angle that I need to make it as high as I need it to go is it may interfere. You can see here, this is a really steep angle. So this may get hit by the blade. So I'm just going to remove this. I could always move it up. Um, and that's probably what I'm going to do because what's going to happen is as I come through and I make that cut, uh, this backer board is going to get chipped away on the bottom. You really don't need anything here. I just have this here as a support so that it can't move and uh, tilt as I'm trying to hold it in place. The clamp is just a little added uh, protection. Now here's the thing. I made it for the sliding part of the table because the blade tilts right on this saw. So I can't run it along the fence, this jig, because then it would trap the miter. That would be dangerous. When I get close to the number, I usually slow down because I don't want to overshoot it because then you have to mess with it going back and forth. 67.8, I need to get to five. So that's six. Perfect, right there. Okay, so I have the jig in place on the table saw. I have the blade raised up. It's at 67.5 degrees. And now I'm just going to take this scrap piece of wood because it's always good to do your tests on a piece of scrap. So what we're gonna do is bring this right up to the backer block, okay? And so I got it just where I want it and I lock it in place, okay? So now I'm gonna go on the other side of the sliding table and I'm gonna run the saw and show you how this works. Okay, so I, I shut off the saw and I back the slider back up. Now, here's a great example of showing you two reasons why the backer's there. Number one, it held the board in place, it didn't move. Two, it gave me a really nice, clean, crisp cut. And three, you can see the chip out back here a little bit on the scrap piece. That's now going to prevent any further chip out on any of the pieces I cut because once I take this off, now I haven't cut any of the film or anything, it's still in the clamp. I'm just gonna take the clamp off, hold the piece out, and you can see that it's, let me see if I can get that in the lens there. It's kinda hard to make it focus, get it in the right spot. But that is a really nice cut. And look how steep that angle is. That there is a 67.5. Your miter saw doesn't cut that. You have to make a jig for it. Now, I have 
some footage of me doing that on the miter saw. I'll show you how I do that. And now I'm just going to cut this piece in half and join these miners together. I can still just move it like this, leave the blade where it's at. Just reposition the camera, zoom in a little bit. This way you can see how perfect this miner is going to be. Let me see if I can get this to focus for me. Look at that miter. Absolutely perfect. I'm not even on a flat surface. On a flat surface there. The miter's together. And that is dead on. Okay, so that's it for this jig. It was really simple to make. It cuts perfect miters. As you can see, here are two of the pieces that I cut, and I don't even have on a flat surface right now, so it's a little, little hard to hold them together and try to get the camera to focus, but this is a 67 and a half degree cut, or a 22 and a half degree cut, depending on how you read it. Now, one thing that I think that I might just do, um, I have this clamp in place and it works mainly for three quarter pieces, but every now and again, I do work with uh, seven eighths, sometimes one inch, sometimes half an inch, depending on what I need to do. So I think, you know, for that application, it's just as quick, instead of adjusting this clamp, I can leave that where it's at, and I can just take one of these auto adjust clamps, like a quick adjust max clamp, and just put it right on there, hold the piece in place, and it auto adjusts just by squeezing it to any size of the wood that I'm using at that time. All right, guys, so I'm going to put links to all these clamps and table saw and blades and everything like that in the description if you are looking for any of those things to purchase. You can check out those links, and I'll bring you right to it. You're not going to pay any more for it, but it does help out the channel a lot when you do purchase those tools. All right, guys, so if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button so you can come back again and get notified every time I upload a video. It's going to be plenty more videos to come. I'm trying to get um, more videos down on a weekly basis. It is a little difficult because I am super busy and sometimes the jobs that I do, they take a long time because I'm a one man show. So uh, it's kind of hard to film them, but I'm gonna try to sneak these little um, quick builds and, and jigs and stuff like that into it and um, maybe some uh, tool techniques and things you need to look out for and stuff like that. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of that stuff. Also, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That helps circulate the video, bring more people to the channel. That helps out also. All right, guys. So. I will see you next time in the shop. Thanks for joining me.